I actually started out in a local dance school taking tap because I loved the sounds and the rhythm. My sister was doing ballet and there was an advertisement for the National Ballet School of Canada and I kind of tagged along with her and ended up getting accepted into this world that I had no idea about. And after two years in the school, I really understood more what ballet was about and, and started to enjoy it and then went through the, the school in Canada, um, in Toronto, and joined the National Ballet of Canada for two seasons, and then basically came over to Europe. And the first company that I joined was actually English National Ballet in 1991, many moons ago. Then after that, I went on to the Dutch National Ballet for seven years, and had worked with William Forsyth along the way in a creation in Canada, actually the second detail, and again in Dutch National with Artifact. And then uh, Bill invited me. Actually, I was injured. I'd broken my, some ligaments in my foot and I had a cast on and I, he, I, I went to Frankfurt to visit some friends and he said, when are you joining? And I'm like, I'm injured. Well, you'll get better. And working for him was really inspiring and has really shaped, I think, a lot of the ideas that I believe in as a director. I then went on to Nacho Duato's company for a few seasons and then decided to stop dancing. I moved to Israel for some years and just took some time off and started guest teaching. And I've, I always actually liked the behind the scenes. I, I don't know that my real calling was a dancer, if I'm honest, I enjoyed doing it, um, but I feel that this is, I'm really in my skin right now. This is what I've meant to do. I love both the artistic side and the administrative building, programming, and also really working with people and collaborating. After a few years, Forsyth asked me to set some of his ballets around the world, which was wonderful. And I was a freelance guest teacher to a lot of companies. And one of the companies I went to set a Forsyth production on was the Semper Oper in Dresden, and I had no previous sort of experience with the company, didn't really know what to expect. And after the premiere, I was then approached by the intendant to take over the company. And I had actually been thinking for a long time, I'd love to be a director. And then I just thought, how, how's this going to happen? No one's going to knock on my door. But through experiences and putting yourself out there, um, I got that opportunity and 17 years later, I'm still there. <laughs> it was a wonderful opportunity for me to start out and, and have actually the trust. I had zero experience directing. I'd done a lot of staging, um, but it was very much about just learning on the job. And I had a really inspiring intendant. I think it was all very, very lucky. Gerd, Professor Gerd Ucker, who was a real gentleman, and he really guided me and show like a father figure almost how to he supported me he gave me a lot of freedom but he really guided me and and he's been such a, a huge influence in my career as well i think i'm very grateful to him after about 15 years corona hit the company and then i experienced going through all that and ended up staying in Dresden now for 17 years, which is, I think, quite a long time for a director to be in one place. Um, and then last season, the opportunity for the application of ENB came up. I applied and I was very fortunate and I'm very grateful to have got the position to start next season as the artistic director. So ever since I can remember, even when I was 12 years old at the National Valley School, I wanted to put together classical productions and, and our principal actually gave us the opportunity to do Paquita at one point and rehearse it. And I love that element. First of all, I don't really, I don't consider myself a choreographer. What I'm very passionate is re-looking at the classics and trying to make the momentum carry you through the piece in, in a very easy way. Also, that if someone does not know ballet, that they could somehow dive into this world and be affected very positively and enjoy the experience. So I, and during my tenure at, in Dresden, I've created Sleeping Beauty. Um, well, not created, I've reworked Sleeping Beauty. 
um, Bayader Nutcracker with Jason Beachy from the Palooka School and uh, Swan Lake. And then most recently, I tried to reimagine a whole Don Q. That was the one where I went in a very different direction. The rest of them, I was using very much the framework and respecting the beautiful choreography of Petipa and just trying to refresh them and relook at them. So, and and I, love, I love that aspect of the job. And I also think as a director, it's nice to be able to connect to your company through some of your work because it's different than just observing repertoire that's there. I can really, every year it comes back, I can relook at it with the dancers, I can rework it with the dancers, and it's a very yeah, nice way to connect with everyone. I think, you know, it's so subjective and everyone has their taste and everything's important. When I went to a director's retreat in Dance East in 2013, a very powerful speaker said a comment, a quote to us, which is, you can look to the past, but don't stare. And it made quite an impression on me. I think in order to know where we're going, we have to know where we've been, but there's something to be said for evolution and art and culture, the world is constantly evolving. I also feel that if Petipa was alive today, given the environment we're in, he would have been influenced in a very different way. And not to say I'm a choreographer, but if I look at my works, the first version that I put out and what they've become now, I, they're hugely different, they've evolved. And I'm more satisfied with the current version. So I think, you know, it's wonderful to see a reconstruction and really see where something came from. Do I feel that that is what we should only be doing? No, um, but I do think that's a valid aspect as well. I feel that in my experience, if I look, when I started the company 17 years ago, I took really stellar soloists from the Mariinsky as well as soloists from Netherlands Dance Theatre or Nacho. It was such a mix and melting pot. And I was really impressed the way the dancers were so inspired by each other to improve in the areas that maybe weren't their strengths. And as a director, if I'm programming, I really like the majority of my company to be able to move through a big spectrum of dance. There's the recipe of kind of having a modern group and a classical group. I think I'm all about breaking down the borders and, and just celebrating dance. I think if it's done well, it can appeal to everyone, whatever style it is. I do think you have to be mindful of how you program on the physicality of the dancers. So I would be careful to not program a classical production and then the next day a very heavy modern, modern production. I usually had worked more in block systems. So we would train for that production. But I do think looking back, the classical dancers really benefited from neoclassical and modern work. I think it changed their classical technique and made it more about the connections and not just the steps. And similarly, the more contemporary dancers, the form and the, the detail and the execution is something that they improved upon. So I think for me, the idea is that it's beneficial, but it has to be guided in the right way, obviously. What I feel is that there's relevance in exposing your dancers to much different things, also in aspects sometimes of having to speak a bit on stage or act in different ways. Sometimes we did some singing in Frankfurt Ballet as well. Just push yourself out of your comfort zone and what you know, also to just expand and build your confidence in a different way. I think if I look in our company, it's very important when you're programming, if you want to maintain a high classical level, that you're doing enough classical productions during the year to keep your dancers in that classical shape, because that's a very, very specific shape that, uh, technique. And it takes so many years to train and it can go so quickly. You can lose that so quickly if you're not properly exercising it every day. To say at the same time, when we, when we did Pina Bausch, for example, Iphigenia of Taurus, which is a three-act production, the detail that the dancers were dived into and what was demanded of them to really excel in that, 
is the same intensity as, as classical. So I would say it's important that consistently you are practicing your spectrum of dance because if you leave one aspect too long, I think it, it could be it could have a very negative effect on the level that you're producing. There was a comment, there was, a, I did give an interview and then the headline was Aaron Watkin wants all body shapes and types in, in ballet. What I would just like to clarify is that we are, besides an art form and artists, we are elite athletes and any athlete has to be at the top of their game and there's a certain physicality that's required. What I meant is I've not been, just because of the environment in Dresden, we're not from the, all the same schools. There's different heights, there's different looks. Inside that traditional, maybe, look of what ballet has represented before, I see room for more d diversity. There would be dancers, people who are naturally long, fine-boned, others that more have an athletic build, people that have different physicalities that can work in this art form. So I think that's what I meant and it was just taken all as a quote and if someone's seeing that for the first time they could think that I mean anyone can do ballet. Not anyone can do ballet, not anyone can be a football player, not anyone can be a pianist. There's a talent that's required and then there's also a certain physicality that is needed. Generally, I feel it's very important to have uh, support for our artists, not only just physical support in physiotherapy, but also development, mental health, uh, and support with people that they feel that they can um, go to that are independent of the artistic team, of someone that they feel safe with. Because I think the younger generation, in my opinion, they're changing, the dynamics change very quickly. Like if I would see even five years ago, 10 years ago, one year ago, how different those groups' sensibilities are. And I think there's something to be said in the past, you just got on with it, you didn't talk about it, you, and you had a system, a pyramid system where the director, like sort of the all-knowing would just say, you do this and no one questioned. I don't think that's beneficial. I also don't, I think we have to be careful. We, we need to empower, but not, it's not entitlement. And that's a fine line. And as a director, you have to be very careful because if you empower too much to the point that, that people feel that they um, don't just contribute, but they sort of dictate every single step that's being made, then I also say like, why am I even in the position as a director? Because what's my job? I'm very collaborative. I like to, to discuss, but at the end of the day, someone has to make those decisions. I think with injuries, yes, it, it's, it's personal. Some people just get on with it and some people can handle a lot more than others and other people need a lot more support. It's a very individual um, thing and it's something that we need to invest in more in the companies. And then I think that the artistic director really needs to direct it to make sure that it's, it's a, it stays healthy, positive, and also productive. Because at the end of the day, all this aspect is important, but dance and your art form is important. And sometimes it can feel when you're at the top that everything else is so important that the last thing you have time and and possibilities to focus on is actually the dance, why you're doing it. So it's just, it's, I think it's finding a, a balance and I think it's difficult for generations um, to move into that naturally because the young generation is like that. My generation is sort of, I know both. I could be comfortable in both because I, from my past, I know what it's like to just do it. <laughs> And then I see what it's like for the young people. And then you have the generation above me that might have more issues trying to get their head around all this and feel, is this important? At the end of the day, I do think it is something we need to talk about. And I'm happy we're having the discussions about it. Being an artistic director, especially traditionally, I think it's starting to change now in a more, for me at least, in a, in a more positive way. 
the all-knowing central person that is just has to figure everything out there's it, it's almost a job of i feel like it's 10 people's jobs and it's very easy to feel overwhelmed it, it you depends on your personality i realized after the first five years of just doing it there was actually a lot of anxiety that i had that i didn't really recognize and affected me in different ways um I always want things done yesterday. I'm very organized and when you have such a scope to, of things to take care of you, that you're responsible for, it's impossible to operate that way and you will really, for lack of better words, kill yourself. Now I think it, with ENB I'm leading in a different structure. I'm leading equally with an executive director and a COO. So my area of expertise, I focus on and I collaborate with their expertise. And I find this system going forward more healthy and actually more realistic. I'm, I'm, I don't have the answers. I haven't been trained in all these aspects, so I don't know why people would think that a director should do all that. And I think that's really the way we're going to evolve towards the future. But I would say now I don't feel like I have to do it in one minute. <laughs> I breathe and I talk to my, my team members and through a collective discussion come to probably much more enlightened and effective decisions than I might have made on my own. So I think, yeah, it's challenging but I love it and it's got a lot of positive aspects too and you just, I try to just take it one day at a time now. When I started in Dresden, I was 36 years old. I thought I was, could conquer the world. I had it all figured out. I always was waiting for the opportunity. And I basically was very fortunate to be offered a platform to just create what I want and do what I want. And I think in the German system, uh, in Germany, it's, you're, you have to really prove yourself. They'll give you the position and then people kind of stand back and watch you. And once you manage to, to be successful and start cultivating something and, and get a recognition for the company and, and internationally and locally, they really back you and support you. And the, the backing of a German opera house is incredible, especially in these days. The funding that's been available. I just created my dreams and I just followed my heart and I didn't have too many people telling me no, think about this. I just sort of did it. In hindsight, so 36-year-old me and 50, almost 3-year-old me, I'm a very different person and I think I am only ready now to take on a position that, like English National Ballet, a, a very different setup. And I'm so excited at this to, 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 to continue learning because I, I think I, I feel very confident in the artistic side, but it, with English National, and it's a very different setup, a charitable organization, the executive aspect of it. I have to know so much more besides what I'm doing in the studio. And I find if we're talking just in general in my life about what I need at the moment, this has come at just the perfect time for me. I'm so grateful for Dresden. I'm going to miss all the wonderful people. And I, if I think about all the memories and what we achieved together, and not only me, because the director's only as strong as his team, um, it's been a dream. And now I'm starting a new chapter and a new adventure with wonderful team here as well. And I'm, I'm really excited for the future. And coming back also to London 30 years later is is um, I'm really excited about that as well.